Hi, my name is Ed Tinker, and I'm going to tell you the differences between Erfurt and DWM and the different years. First, let's do the different years. Originally, DWM, they were the ones that made the Luger. They originally started off as a board chart, and to make it more marketable, um, Luger, Georg Luger, uh, came in and moved it all around, and board chart didn't like it. And eventually what you got was the PO8, the PO8 Luger, which means it was in 1908, it became the Army uh, Luger because the German Navy had actually made uh, the 1906 as their Luger. Well, I can barely talk today. So originally the Lugers were made, they were trying, of course, to get a military contract and this right here is a 1900 model. Notice the dished toggles on each side. Uh, DWM is on the top of the toggle. And there is a grip safety. You can see that there. Now, in 1906 model, that was a 1900, this is a 1906 model. This one uh, actually went to uh, Switzerland, but it was a commercial one made. They still had a grip safety, but the toggles are like a regular 1908 toggle. Um, otherwise, this one, notice the longer barrel, I believe it's a four and seven eighths. Let's look, yeah, so. Uh, they're in 30 Luger, which is also 7.65 Luger. Uh, 30 uh, sounds like it um, could be a lot of stuff, but the 30 Luger and a 7.65 means that it's the same cartridge, just talking about, I guess, uh, more of the British or American is a 30 Luger and 7.65 millimeter Luger, which the 32 ACP, which is like for PPKs, Walther PPs, CZs, etc. They are a much smaller cartridge. 32, it's about it's the same as the barrel. However, the cartridge itself is totally different. So then it became the 1908. And this is what they bought. And notice that the first ones had a slick back. They had no uh, stock lug on them at all compared to... This one's a DWM, made in probably, let me look, about 1920, uh, 1923, around that time frame. It's a police, and they have, legally could make them for the police. I think I talked about that more on my police video, but it has a stock lug. Notice this one does not have a stock lug. That was requested, and it. a lot of people say it was just easier to manufacture them, and one of the reasons was that you could put a stock onto an LP08. Uh, LP08 is a PO8, 1908. Uh, some people will call this the 1914 model because this is when they first came out. This is an Erfurt, and the difference between Erfurts and DWMs, I'll talk about in just a minute. Has a stock lug, has an eight inch barrel. This one's really shiny. It's been hard buffed and reblued. And obviously the stocks are stag grips, which I like. This is the very first Luger that I ever bought. So uh, I've kept it. And I don't always keep a lot of my guns, but this is nice. So a DWM, they were told to mark them. Let me find, this is a good example. Nope, it's not a good example. And the reason is, is that originally started off as a commercial. Well, here, let me see if, if that will show up. Now, a commercial Luger, has the letters here, I mean, the numbers here on the bottom, and then they have a suffix. This is a suffix. I'm not even using my glasses. I believe that's a suffix N. It's an M, 6107 Mike, so M. Now, a commercial one would not be marked where it's in the open. They mark them hidden. So you'll notice that on a takedown lever, it has a number here. And on the side plate has a number here. 
So once they go into military or police service, they mark them, but they don't mark them everywhere. The reason I say that is in a military one, it would be marked right here on the takedown lever, and this one's not. However, it is on the side plate. Side plates can be kind of funny little beasts. So you'll find them uh, usually marked because uh, if they get lost, if they get mixed up, your Luger may not work. I've I've had I had a Luger, the shooter Luger, but I had bought it complete and I was having problems with it and it wouldn't even click. And I must have used, I think, four different uh, side plates. And then the one that worked, I kept that one with it from then on. And Erfurt, and you're not going to be able to see this, but I can talk about it. This is 6441. 6441. I've had it for years. Uh, there's the normal acceptance markings. Everybody calls, a lot of people call them proofs. But on the right side, these are acceptance markings. So you, a lot of times there'll be three and uh, there'll be, there'll be one acceptance marking, second acceptance marking. And the third one is actually the final proof. So the firing proof. And sometimes you'll see them with something else. Um, in the Erfurts, you're more likely to see it. There'll be an RC and that's a Reich's Commission. I'm sure I'll be corrected if, I, uh, if I'm remembering it wrong. But anyway... Those are like, it was looked over by another super uh, supervisor and they looked at it and they said, yeah, this is fine. But then it gets stamped that way that there was an issue and it was accepted. If the part's not accepted, then it's just tossed out or probably remade, uh, fixed up, but probably just gotten rid of. Because once it has a, a problem, then it's got a problem. And so on a DWM... You will find the numbers exposed in many places. Takedown lever, I won't remember all of these. Uh, side plate, the uh, safety lever. It has the last two. So you'll have the first, you'll have the four serial number but because most, so many of them have four, uh, even though they start off at one. But you wouldn't see a, you wouldn't see a zero one on the front frame, but you do see them, I'll see them here. But that's if they're the last four such as 64441, then you would see the 41. If it was 6401, you would see the 01. Otherwise, you would just see a 1 and a 1. But the exterior numbers are takedown lever, uh, side plate. Uh, this is the sear, the safety. Grip sa uh, not grip safety, the, uh, the safety right here. And then on the toggle, you will find it on the extractor. No, my gun's not loaded. On the middle toggle and on the rear toggle. And um, that's a normal military one. And then, of course, on the, uh, uh, on the uh, magazine itself. It, I, I, slow, I, I went, huh? Uh, I forgot. This is, the, this is the fairly rare. This one right here is LP-157. Uh, it was Jan Stills. It's in his books. It's a 1911 DWM, and it went to South Africa and fought in uh, some colonial wars. And this particular mag is a beautiful mag, and it's a uh, four-digit, and it's marked longitudinally, I think. But anyway, these are early mags, and just this mag, it's beautiful. Um, it was with the gun... Um, Probably, I would. I don't remember when they switched over, but this is probably a four hundred dollar mag, maybe four fifty. Doesn't have any cracks or breaks. It's a pretty little mag, and the body is just beautiful. On a DWM, the grip screws will not be marked. Um, this is the uh, magazine release. It will not have anything on this side, and I'm bringing that up on purpose because. On an Erfurt, and I know you can't see it, they put the little acceptance stamp there. You see them on the grip screws. And especially with like Simpsons. Oh, that's an awful screw. I need to replace that one. And then um, you would see the serial number last two. Uh, so that it's 4-1. Uh, this one's been wiped because it, somebody hard buffed it. And then there would be an Erfurt stamp. You see the Erfurt stamps everywhere. I would say the Simpson stamps are more, but they 
everything that was accepted by them, uh, they stamped. So there's a, essentially there's uh, four different types of Lugers that you see often. First is a 1900, dished toggles, 1906, normal toggle, and it still has a grip safety. Generally, these are, this one is actually one of the one of 1,000. Uh, it's in that, that serial number that uh, everybody feels is correct. A um, friend of mine is writing a book, and he's coming up with some information that uh, may put some people in a quandary in the sense that uh, the 1 to 1,000, there's only about a 20 numbers that are actually listed but obviously they're going to be around those serial numbers. So anyway, this one is uh, 6303, and it came from a friend of mine. Uh, I might as well tell that story. This is a fascinating gun. I bought two guns from a friend of mine. He lived in America, um, Minnesota, I think, and then he uh, was working in Canada. I don't know why I sounded surprised about that. A really nice guy. And um, gun laws are much tougher in Canada. And so when he retired, he retired actually to Canada. And um, so pistols are hard there to own. Uh, I think they have to be, what, over five inches or something like that. So this was just under that. So I, I helped him sell three or four guns, and I bought two of them from him. I bought a, an M1 carbine. It was a Winchester. And he said that, uh, there's a neat story on that of uh, some GI came along with on a, in a Jeep across the frozen water and he uh, sold them for 50 bucks a piece. And him and his family bought a, one or two of them. Anyway, they used it for years and years as a camp gun and I got it. This one, same kind of thing. They were playing cards and uh, some guy came along and, you know, hey, in the camp type thing. Uh, remember, this is in the early 1920s or so. And uh, he was carrying this, and I don't know if he just wanted to sell it or if he lost playing cards, but um, it ended up with them. And uh, the barrel is does not have any markings on it, so at some point the barrel was replaced. But these um, one of 1,000, uh, that's not the correct term. Everybody calls them a test Luger, a U.S. test Luger, and lots of them have wrong parts. And that's just because uh, they put a lot of them together. Uh, they shot them to, because they were testing them, and they shot some of them and had issues, and parts were swapped out. So, 1900, 1906, 1908, with no stock lug. In 1913, about middle way through the year, that's when stock lug started to be required. So then you have the 1908 with the stock lug, and then you have your LP08. So I guess there's actually five variations, just as a basic variation. And of course, you've got DWM and Erfurt, both made in World War I. During the Weimar period, Simpson made Lugers, uh, about 11,800 of them, approximately. Uh, I, I keep track of all Simpson. So if you have a Simpson Luger, shoot me a note. Uh, I will... I keep the data on them. Um, I don't give out people's names or anything like that. But I I have over 800 Simpsons in my database. And well over 700 of them I have physically looked at with good pictures or in person. Because every time somebody comes across a Simpson, they talk to me about it. So you've got DWM and Erfurt from World War One. Simpson during the uh, Weimar period. And then later Weimar period... Krieghoff was trying to get the machine gun uh, contract because they were expecting that to be much better in uh, cost-wise and in profit. So then you have Simpson, Krieghoff, and then the DWM and Mauser are both kind of the same company. It's like a parent company. And so they switched all of their, all of their parts and everything over to Mauser and then Mauser made Lugers up until 1942 with the BYFs. Now, that's, I'll talk about BYFs in the next couple of days. But there's just those, those, dip, those five companies. There's also Vickers in uh, England. 
and um, the Dutch wanted uh, 10,000 Lugers, and I've read several conflicting stories on it. I believe the vast majority of the parts were sent over to Vickers, and then they redid them, and then there's some rumors that they still weren't up to snuff, and they went to Liège, Belgium, and were finished off. But no matter what, there were well over 10,000, but there was a specific contract of 10,000 uh, DWM that uh, got Vickers marked on them. I could be wrong on that number, maybe 8,000. But the point is, is that there are those manufacturers. And then there's the Swiss. And the Swiss started making their own, I don't know, uh, 1930s probably. Uh, part of it was that they saw war coming or possibility of war and they wanted their own weapons. And it's also easier if they're manufactured in-house. So they started making them and they actually changed them. And uh, the 19, I think it's called the 1929 model. I'm not a huge uh, expert at all on Swiss guns. Uh, although my son lives there now, so I'm starting to learn more about them. Anyway, uh, hopefully this was at least uh, entertaining, if not a little bit haphazard. I'll probably change this one out, but like, subscribe, all the normal stuff. I appreciate it. Thank you very much.